today we're going to be making a curtain for a classroom window. These curtains are really nice to use in the classroom, especially in emergency situations. My school is going to be attaching the curtain to the window using Velcro. On the door above the window, they're going to have the hook side of the Velcro, that's the rough side. And so on the back of my curtain, I have the loop side of the Velcro, that's the soft side. And then you can see the ribbon attached to hold the curtain in place when it's not in use. There are also two magnets at the bottom corners to ensure that the curtain stays in place. If your school is not going to be using Velcro to attach the curtain to the door, you do have a few more options. You can simply add more magnets. I found that four magnets on the top works pretty well. You can also have loops of ribbon along the top and then hook it to the door using hooks. For this project, you're going to want some cotton fabric. I'm just using regular quilter's weight cotton. You'll need about three-fourths of a yard and it will make two curtains. You're also going to want some one-fourth inch wide ribbon. I'm using gross grain ribbon here. One button between three-fourths and one inch wide. Some Velcro. You only need the loop side, so that's the soft side. And this is sew-on Velcro. Uh, you don't want any of the sticky stuff because that could goop up your sewing machine. And then you'll also want two 18 millimeter magnets. These are just some ceramic magnets that I picked up on Amazon. To make the curtain for your window, you first need to have the appropriate measurements. When measuring the window, you want to make sure that you measure from frame to frame on the outside edges, not just the glass section. When I measured the window at our school, I found that the width of the window was approximately eight and a quarter inches and the height was about 23 and a half. When I cut the fabric for the curtain, I need it to be a little larger. I need extra space for the seam allowance as well as a little bit more on the top for the Velcro to be attached. I added one inch to the width and two and a quarter inches to the height. This will give me enough space for a half an inch seam allowance and that Velcro at the top. So when I actually cut the rectangle of fabric for the curtain, it's going to be nine and a quarter inches wide and 25 and three quarter inches tall. If you're attaching the curtain to your window in a different way. So for example, if you're going to have loops at the top or magnets all around, then you don't need that extra space at the top. So the rectangle you cut will be slightly different. In this case, you only need to add room for the seam allowance. So you're going to add one inch to the width and one inch to the height. So if your window measures the same that mine did, the rectangle you would cut would be nine and a quarter by 24 and a half. Simply add one inch to each measurement for seam allowance. Next, cut two rectangles of fabric, the size that you determined in the previous step. Then you're gonna take these two rectangles and place them right sides together. Now we're going to stitch around the rectangle with a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to start up here, this is going to be the top of the curtain, and I'm going to come down and around all the way around the rectangle and back here. And I'm going to leave a small gap about three inches to turn. So let's head to the sewing machine. When I get to a corner, I like to stop and pivot, and then I'll check to see if it's the right seam allowance. Notice that my fabric is hitting the 5 8 mark, so that's not quite small enough. So I'm gonna turn it back around, take one more stitch, and then try again. And you can see now I'm on the half inch mark. Both 
both of the rectangles are sewn together and now I'm going to trim the corners. I'm just gonna cut a triangle off the corner, getting close to but not cutting my stitches. Now turn right side out and poke out all of the corners. I like to use a corner turner to make sure all the little points are fully extended. Now we're going to press the rectangle flat and as we do so, make sure that the side edges are not tugged in. You'll notice that on the sides, the seam kind of wants to get moved down in here. We don't want that to happen. So I like to pinch the edge with the stitches and make sure it's all the way on the side. So I'll do this as I press. Make sure that the edges of the opening are tucked inside so that it looks like it's been sewn. Pressing's done, and here is my opening. So this is the top of the curtain. The short edge that does not have the opening is the bottom, and that's what we're gonna work on next to add our magnets. So I'm gonna zoom in on the bottom of the curtain here. And the next thing I'm gonna do is mark the placement for the magnets. I'm using an air erase marker for this, but you could also use chalk or a regular pencil. I'm gonna draw a square on the corner of the curtain that is one and a quarter inches by one and a quarter inches. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Again, one and a quarter by one and a quarter. Now I'm gonna take the magnets and insert them in the curtain. You may wanna do one at a time so they don't accidentally get stuck together inside. So I've dropped one magnet in. So you can see my magnet is all the way in the corner here and I'm gonna push it down so it's all the way at the edge. And then I'm gonna sew along my marked line. This can be a little challenging sometimes because the magnet can stick to the needle plate on your sewing machine. So if you would prefer, you can hand stitch this instead of using your machine. Uh, once I get the first one done, I'm gonna drop in the second magnet and do the same on the other corner. Let's go to the sewing machine. You'll want to take special care when sewing with magnets. They're usually fine near the needle plate of your machine, such as when you use a magnetic seam guide, but if you're using a computerized sewing machine, take care to keep the magnets away from any of the computerized components of this machine, especially LCD screens. Magnets can potentially damage your sewing machine and interfere with its functions, so if you're not comfortable with that, you may want to hand stitch these in place. Do take care to make sure that the magnet is out of your sewing path. You don't accidentally want to hit it. To be safe, it's always a good idea to wear protective eyewear, just in case you do accidentally hit that. So I've dropped my magnet in. I'm pressing it all the way to the corner as far away from where I'm sewing as possible. And now I'm gonna stitch around. And because of the magnet, sometimes you do have to guide the fabric a little bit more forcefully than you normally do. You can see my two magnets are in place and secure so that when the curtain moves, those magnets won't. If you're securing your curtain to the door using magnets, you can add as many of these square pockets as you like. 
The number you need may vary depending on the strength of the magnets. For mine, I found it worked well with one magnet in each of the four corners, plus two more on the top edge, for a total of six magnets on the curtain. The next thing we're going to do is add the Velcro and the tie. For the tie, I'm going to use an 18 inch piece of grass green ribbon. I'm on the wrong side of the curtain, and I'm going to take my ribbon and fold it in half. And I'm going to find the center of the panel. The curtain I have here is just over eight inches wide. It's about eight and one eighth, so halfway for me would be four and a sixteenth. Keeping the ribbon folded, I'm going to start it about three eighths to a half an inch down from the top edge of the curtain. If you're using three-fourths wide Velcro, I'd start it three-eighths of an inch down. If you're using one-inch wide Velcro, I'd start it about a half an inch down. And I'm going to baste this in place with just a quick little stitch right here, about an eighth of an inch from the top of my ribbon. The ribbon's now attached to the top edge, and I'm ready to add the Velcro. Now I don't want to see the Velcro on the front of the curtain, so I'm going to cut it about a quarter inch shorter than the width of the curtain. And I'm going to place it about an eighth of an inch down from the top edge and an eighth of an inch from each side. Let me flip this around and zoom in so you can see that a little better. So again, it's centered about an eighth of an inch down and an eighth of an inch in from each side. I'm just going to clip that in place. And now I'll head to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew all the way around the rectangle of the Velcro with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So all the way around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you have a triple stitch option on your machine, that would be really great and make it very secure. Um, if you don't have that, you can go over it twice if you like, um, if it's something that's gonna be taken up and down a lot. Um, at my school, it shouldn't be removed very often, so I'm just gonna go around it once, but I am gonna make sure that I backstitch securely. The Velcro is now attached and it also helped secure the ribbon in place. If you're securing your curtain to the door using ribbon loops instead of Velcro, insert three ribbon loops into the top opening of the curtain. Then top stitch the opening closed with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And now we're going to flip it to the front side and along the top edge aligning with where the ribbon is we're going to place a button. So I'm just going to put a pin right here to mark where that ribbon is so I can see. And so just above that, about where my basting stitches are, I'm going to place a button. I've double threaded my needle for added strength. And I'm going to start from the front side to hide my knot. It can be a little tough sewing through the Velcro and the fabric, so if you have a thimble, that may be helpful. And again, I'm gonna end through the front side, just behind the button, to hide the knot. And the curtain's finished. And then when it's not in use, simply roll up the bottom of the curtain. And we now have a cute, secure classroom window curtain.